Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. All the leaf blowers are out there today, so it's a little difficult uh, to get my normal filming location. Um, today we have a great tool. Uh, it's uh, from 1917. It's called a matchless tire tool. It was made by the Bridgeport uh, Hardware Manufacturing Company and uh, very rare. You don't see these around, especially in decent shape. And uh, this one is in pretty good shape. So let's get started and see what okay, we got. Okay, today's project, we're going to be talking about um, a type of pry bar. Now, here is a traditional pry bar, and you can tell by the tip looks like this. This one here is a 24-inch. Uh, Pittsburgh made this, which is Harbor Freights, uh, and it's made in Taiwan, you could see. I've used this uh, dozens of times. This thing is fantastic. Chrome vanadium steel here. It ca I think it came in a three-point... Uh, three piece set and i must have the other piece uh, floating around somewhere and again you could see this was made in taiwan chrome vanadium you could see it written here chrome vanadium this is i've i can't no complaints these were inexpensive they really were great uh tools but a lot of times you'll be working on let's say a tire now this is something years ago that uh, this is one of the first tools you learn about years ago when you destroy a couple tires by trying to use a screwdriver and this is what's called a tire spoon and a tire spoon is basically a little bit thinner of a pry bar but with a curved surface i bought these off amazon a while ago i believe these are taiwanese too um, but uh, I had to do some uh, change my tractor tires had to change some of the put some tubes in there and these worked flawlessly I mean they were just great they're strong lightweight and they just were able to get in and get those tractor tires off so if you don't have a good set of tire spoons and you have to do any kind of work like that you know when we used to do bicycles years ago when we were kids you'd sometimes you pinch a, a tube and put a flat in it well that's what I'm talking about today's project. Uh, Joe from Joe's shop did one of these a while ago. Uh, I think he traded with Rusty Gun or something. And uh, I had this floating around for a while. And I said, you know, this thing really needs to be restored. And if you look closely here, you can see it is a Bridgeport uh, tool. There you go. There's the emblem, Bridgeport Tool Manufacturing. And uh, it's just a, a nice tool. And it's a pry bar. You could use it as a tire spoon, but, you know, years ago you could use it for so many things. So we're going to work on this today, take a good look at what it looks like. It is kind of a mess, but uh, hopefully we'll get this nice. I was going to change the wood, but it's so solid that I said, well, you know what? I guess this is going to stay on there. So let's get working on it. Okay, our post wire brush evaluation. You can see here the steel. You know, there's a couple dings in it and whatnot. I left this here. Uh, I didn't do that yet because when you get to the cross grain here, this is very important. You have to cover this with that. Uh, we use the tin, the aluminum can with the tape so that we don't go cross grain on here because that'll really mess up the wood. But, um, and over here we have some, you know, some splintering of the wood. We're going to see how that comes along. And we got a couple, uh, looks like somebody might have been banging the top of this. So it's, uh, we'll have to grind those off. You see those little wings there? And uh, other than that, we'll see this side looks much better, this side of the wood. And But that's why you do your post wire brush evaluation. You can see what, you know, what's underneath that rust. But you can see the difference here. That's what we started with. And uh, that's after the wire brush. And then we'll get to the, uh, the sanding it down. Let's get to it. Okay, now again, when we're doing the uh, wood on the uh, belt, you're going to get a clogging. You see, that's all clogged uh, sawdust, and it makes the belt uh, less effective. So every once in a while, get yourself that sanding belt clean. I was telling you about Harbor Freight sells them real cheap, and, and watch how quick this works. There you go. Like a brand new belt again, and uh, we'll keep finished.
Okay, what we're going to do now is the handle. And what we're going to do to give the candle a little bit of color is uh, now we sanded it down nice and smooth. We're going to use amber shellac. That has a little bit of a, uh, a yellow or amber coating uh, tint to it. And after we wipe it down with the amber shellac, we're going to take a little denatured alcohol and wipe off the silver parts here because we don't the we don't want the amber to remain onto the uh, the silver part and make it look a yellowed. So then we'll take a Q-tip with some denatured alcohol and wipe off all the uh, shellac that we didn't want on there, and especially the rivets and things like that, so it looks good. Now you know my favorite part. Remember what the tool looked like before we started. And we are calling this project finished. And you could see here how beautiful this came out, huh? Look at that. It's just and polished it out nicely. You could see here all the way down. But um, I'm so glad we were able to save the handles because uh, this tool, like I said, very rare tool. You don't see many of these floating around because uh, they were a kind of a specialty tool. And again, it is a, a Bridgeport hardware company manufacturer, but it went under the matchless was the name of the tool, matchless uh, tire tool. And you could be, see the B Bridgeware hardware manufacturing logo there. And um, what makes this tool so interesting is that uh, being that they were used mostly for tire repair and tire removal and things like that. Uh, after with the advent of tubeless tires and things like that and tire machines, uh, these were delegated a lot of times to the shop of pry bars and things like that. And a lot of times they were beat up and, and things like that. I have another one of these a little bit different. I just can't find it now. It's uh, it's, it's amongst some of the uh, hidden tools I have. But um, these were really uh, a very useful tool. Uh, 1917 is when they were marketed. So it is, uh, you know, 100 years old, uh, the design. Uh, they didn't make too many of these. This was an earlier one. This one is about almost 13 inches. Later on, they knocked them down a little bit to about 11 inches. But uh Really nice tool. Let me show you something about the finish here. Now here, uh, a lot of people are saying, what do you do about the finish so it don't get rusted again and things like that? When you polish a, a piece of steel, and then uh, again, I put a couple coats of uh, wax on there, of Carnuba wax. Let me show you what happens. when I'm going to dip this in water. This is regular water here. And I want to show you what happens. Here, we're dipping that in water. I'm pulling it out. And you could see it is bone dry. Look at that. Water bone dry how is that that's because the surface is so polished and so uh shiny that water just don't stick to it you see you get they beat up like that and it just wipes off and anytime you have a problem you know you uh wipe the tool down with a little bit of uh, oil or anything like that and that is good to go so that's why my tools never rust after that because there's nothing for the moisture to stick to so in closing we have our matchless tire tool made by the bridgeport hardware manufacturing company and uh beautiful tool quite rare you don't see these floating around especially in any kind of decent shape they're usually all beat up uh this one was was wasn't too bad and I appreciate you tuning in. Thanks so much. I hope you have a nice day. Take care. Bye-bye.